Jabba the Hutt was said to have lived by a simple axiom. Too much of a good thing is never, ever enough. This mentality was shared by most members of his species, the bloated, slug-like huts, who are one of the wealthiest and most powerful races in the galaxy. Virtually all of this wealth and power was ill-begotten, a result of criminal activity and ancient imperial conquests. Their greed and ambition knew no bounds, and thousands of years before the Battle of Yavin, these traits led them to concoct a plan to take over the known galaxy. We'll be discussing that plot and the Republic's equally abhorrent response to it in this fifth installment of our series on the history of the Republic. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Our story resumes where it left off at the end of the last episode, in 15,000 BBY, at the end of the Indecta era. Up to that point in time, despite some early civil wars, the Republic had managed to insulate itself from major threats, as most of the civilizations it encountered only spanned a few star systems at most. However, as the Indecta era ended and the Kaimudon era began, that was about to change. By 15,000 BBY, the Republic had made contact with several alien civilizations that had neglected to join it, including the Bothans of Bothaway, the Nautilans of Glianselm, and the Zabraks of Iridonia. Chinese explorers told tales of the distant alien world Salin, while Republic scouts started to push further into the slice. But the Republic was also coming up on the borders of two major alien empires, the Herglic Trade Empire and the Hutt Empire. The Herglic Trade Empire controlled a large swath of the southern core, just off the Republic's western border. From their homeworld of Giju, the whale-like Herglics had influence over many civilizations, including Abrogado Ray, the Dolphirm planet states, and the Botor Enclave. The Herglics were powerful, wealthy, and highly advanced, having first taken to the stars 2,000 years before the Republic's formation. Fortunately for the Republic, they were also quite friendly. They had known the Republic since its formation thanks to regular trade with the Duros, and the Republic had little to fear from contact with them. The Huts, however, were another story entirely. Like the Herglic Trade Empire, the Hutt Empire was founded long before the Republic and it grew to be quite wealthy and powerful, having enslaved entire species over the years. Ruled from the ancient Hutt homeworld of Val, the Hutt Empire had been known to the Republic since the Taiwanese War in 24,000 BBY. As the Republic pushed further into the Rim, it was cautious of this distant empire of gluttonous slugs, unwilling to come into conflict with them. The Hutt Empire, meanwhile, didn't bother much with the Republic, at least while the Republic's colonies were still far from its borders. When Republic settlers started colonizing worlds closer to Hutt space, however, the Huts responded with raids, slaughtering or enslaving the populations of entire planets. Though both sides stopped short of a full-scale war, a confrontation between the two great civilizations became inevitable. Fortunately for the Republic, the Hutt Empire imploded before that could happen. 15,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Hutt Empire tore itself apart in a civil war called the Hutt Cataclysms. For unknown reasons, Hutt clans turned terrible weapons against each other, reducing some of their most ancient colonies to lifeless wastes. Worst of all, the Cataclysms claimed Val itself, which had its atmosphere vaporized and surface obliterated. Greatly weakened, the surviving huts regrouped at the planet Evoca, which they renamed Nalhutta and attempted to cobble together a new civilization. With the Hutt Empire gone, the Republic experienced another period of booming expansion, much like the earlier Great Manifest period. But the huts had led the Republic to develop a greater sense of caution about colonization efforts, leading to the re-establishment of the Republic Navy in 15,000 BBY. In its first few years of service, the new navy proved itself in border conflicts at Corbon, Esaga, and the Sundered Vale Nebula, as well as in a brief war against the Aquilish of Ando. It also kept Republic borders safe during the Herglic Crush of 14,743 BBY, a civil war within the Herglic Trade Empire. 
Following the Hoeglich crush, there were concerns within the Republic about whether peace with the trade empire would last. But these fears were assuaged in around 13,000 BBY when the Hoeglichs and their empire decided to join the Republic. Of course, the Kaimudon era wasn't all fun and games. Starting in 14,500 BBY, the Third Alsakan Conflict began, which saw Kurusan loyal Republic forces attack Al Sakani allied worlds in the Komen or Run campaign, hitting Katadar, Alderaan, and finally Tapasi before attacking Al Sakan itself, destroying the city of Rupaka. That conflict ended in 14,300 BBY, after which there was peace for about 500 years. A fourth Al Sakan conflict followed from 13,800 to 13,200 BBY, shortly after which a fifth Al Sakan conflict erupted in 13,050 BBY. That conflict was focused around the northern dependencies, the Republic colonies north of Kurusan, which had been largely settled by Al Sakan. In that conflict, Al Sakani Admiral Herkin, equipped with a fleet of brand new cruisers, commanded a furious defense of these colonies, routing Republic forces at Borlius, Twith, Zafel, Dekat, Glee Anselm, and Iridonia. His efforts ended the conflict in Al Sakan's favor in 12,700 BBY. This was just in time because the Republic was starting to have real problems right about then. Proper contact was finally being established with the huts as Republic scouts had blazed a hyperspace lane the Utmian Pabol from Jindain to Nal Hutta itself, the Huts' new homeworld. This contact renewed concerns about the Huts and not without reason. After the loss of Val, the Huts had moved to Evokai, which they brought piecemeal from the native Evokai through a series of scams. After taking the planet, which was renamed Nal Hutta, they all but exterminated the Evokai. Inspired by this new method of conquest, the hut leader, Budila Hestelik Amura, instituted a philosophy called Kajidik. In line with Kajidik, the huts put an end to the old imperial ways, issuing military conquest in favor of achieving economic control over planets and organizations. This ultimately led to the formation of the hut cartel, which became a powerful force in the galactic black market. By the time of the forging of the Utmian Pabol, the Huts and their black market had become wealthy and powerful enough to infiltrate the Republic itself. The Huts wanted to take over the Republic, but not militarily. Rather, they sought to seize control of the Republic's economy and thus indirectly conquer the galaxy from within. From the beginning, the Huts were met with success. The Galactic Senate was already corrupt and the Huts were easily able to corrupt it much further to their own benefit. But the growing corruption and gridlock in the Republic had an unintended side effect. It led to the rise of a religion called the Pious Dea, Centered around the worship of an entity called only the Goddess, Pious Dea became popular among the humans of the Core Worlds due to its emphasis on purity, internal policing, and the purging of unsavory elements within communities. However, the religion had a dark underside to it. Pius Deo was violently humanocentrist, deeming virtually all alien species as impure and lesser in comparison to humans. In 11,987 BBY, a Pius Deo conspiracy in the Galactic Senate saw the corrupt Bothan Supreme Chancellor, Pers Ilya, impeached and assassinated, with Constapex I, a Pius Deo adherent, rising to replace him. So began the Pios Dea era, a dark time for the Republic. Over the course of the next few decades, Contespex transformed the Republic into a theocracy, handing over virtually all important government positions to members of the Pios Dea hierarchy. Those of you who have seen our previous video on this era know what came next. In 11,965 BBY, Contespex declared war on the huts sparking the first of the 34 Pious Dea Crusades. These horrible, genocidal wars between the Pious Dea Republic and various alien civilizations dominated the next millennium, as millions of human soldiers crowded onto cathedral ships and stormed alien worlds with cries of the goddess wills it. Under the guidance of Contispex I and his successors, who all took the name Contispex in his honor, they wiped out entire species and ruined the civilizations of many more, 
carrying their wealth and resources back to the core aboard galleons. The first few Pius Dea Crusades were directed against the Huts, as the Huts were widely hated in the Republic. In the first, second, third, and fourth Crusades, the Crusaders pushed the Huts back rimward through wild space, slaughtering any non-humans they encountered along the way. The brutality these Crusaders showed in these early battles shocked many in the Republic. The Jedi Order, in particular, condemned the Crusaders' actions and cut ties with the Republic, withdrawing to Ossus and refusing to participate. Though they were, at that point, unwilling to actually battle the Republic, they were sworn to protect. Of course, some Jedi Knights fought against the Crusaders anyway, while a few troubled souls joined them, falling to the dark side and becoming the Order of the Terrible Glare. After the first few Crusades, the Pious Dea turned their attention to other alien species. While aliens and alien sympathetic humans were hunted down and branded heretics within the Republic, the military began attacking neighboring civilizations. In 11,884 BBY, the Great Northern Crusade, or the Seventh Crusade, saw bloody assaults on the Zabrax and the Ithorians, while the Crusade of the Wilds in 11,791 BBY, or the Tenth Crusade, saw the genocide of various species living along the Salen Corridor. Fortunately, not everyone in the Republic was keen to go along with this madness. In 11,820 BBY, the Al-Sakani finally did something useful in the 6th al sakan conflict, during which they established lines of communication with the Duros, Herglicks, Huts, and other alien species. The al sakani offered these species covert protection from the Republic in the centuries that followed. The Pious Dea Crusades went on for nearly a full thousand years and featured many terrible atrocities. The 11th Crusade devastated Herglick space, while the 12th Crusade saw the Republic bomb the Zarasines of Zarasenia III and the Turasans of Teresa back into the Stone Age. Not every species the Pious Dea fought was wiped out, however. The Baraguin, the targets of the 15th Crusade, were able to weather the storm, as were the Bothans and Lennox, the targets of the 23rd Crusade. By 11,500 BBY, the Pious Dea dominated millions of worlds, a mix of human colonies and conquered alien worlds. Many of the remote colonies became ordnance slash regional depots, or ords for short, which were essentially naval fortress worlds. On these worlds, many of which retained the prefix ord, even to the modern era, the PSD housed fleets of sinister cathedral ships, tasked with laying waste to any nearby alien civilizations perceived as a threat, alongside smaller Manor War vessels and primitive bywings. But despite the establishment of this well-oiled military machine, the Pious Dea's wars began to stall in around 11,100 BBY, likely due to a lack of good targets. As a result, the zealotry of the Pious Dea Republic turned inwards and a bloody series of inquisitions began. As the Republic tore itself to shreds, Kamasi diplomats finally convinced the Jedi Council to end their centuries-long recusal and the Order entered into a conspiracy with the Kamasi, the al sakani and an alliance of other alien species. After the 34th Crusade in 11,057 BBY, they spread a secret heresy among the Pious Dea, allying with millions of renunciates in the military who were sick of all the cult garbage. In 10,967 BBY, these heretics declared themselves, sparking the Renunciation, a brutal civil war that was also known as the Seventh al sakan Conflict. Under the leadership of the Jedi, the Renunciates, the al sakani and their alien allies waged war across the galaxy, smiting Pious Dea fleets at Ord Mirit, Ixtlar, Fondor, Ord Karida, and Cerulea. Most of the Republic military defected to join the Renunciates, but the Pious Dea faithful nonetheless retained their fleets of cathedral ships and their crusader armies. However, a year into the war, the cult was dealt a killing blow when the Bureau of Ships and Services sided with the Renunciates. The Bureau ceded every cathedral ship in the fleet with bad navy computer data, forcing the ships to jump out into the middle of nowhere and then remotely disabling their hyperdrives. Most of the surviving crusaders were left to starve in the void as they damn well deserved. But the vanguard of the Pious Day of Fleet was sent to Yuquine, where it was routed by the Jedi and the Renunciates. 
After a team of Jedi Knights boarded the fleet's flagship, the Flame of Synthara, and captured Contus Pex 19, the pious Dea finally collapsed. The cold was purged from the Republic, and its leaders were imprisoned for life. An uneasy period of rebuilding and reconciliation ensued, during which the Jedi all but took over the Republic in a bid to put it back together. They won successful, in the end, but worse problems than the pious Dea were soon to follow as a new threat to the Republic blossomed within the Jedi Order itself. But that's a story for another time, namely when we release the next video in this series. But what did you guys think of today's video? Let us know all your thoughts and more in the comment section below. And just before you go to scrub that Bill Art picture out of your mind, make sure you check out some of our links in the description below, including our new channel called The Braved, where we go through all different eras of history to find some of the most badass individuals and make an epic story with some sick edits that I'm sure you guys will all love. If you just want to listen to some music, check us out on Relax Jack, where we take a lot of the music from there and use it in these videos. And if you just want to join us in the wider community, check us out on our Discord and Geetsley's Gaming Network. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.